So we're just going to start this image like every other image, and that would be by downloading the image through the link at the top of the doc. Just so you know, the doc is linked in the description of each video. After it is downloaded, you will use the highly advanced program 7-Zip by expertly clicking a few buttons. Wait, you don't have 7-Zip? Well, I expected someone who watches this to be less primitive. But if this is your case, just use the Extract All button provided by Windows. I also very kindly added a Cyber Patriot Discord server link, which is where I found this image. I suggest you join this. Also, if you haven't noticed, I have deleted the old video I made on this. This is because the video was poorly planned, and I didn't have a good idea on how to approach the, the image. This one will be much better. In fact, a great difference is that I went through the image previously and created a, speak, a script to speak off later. So if some of this seems a little off tune, that's why. So as usual, it will take an eternity of human technological advancements and progress before this image decides to start. Just a heads up, the steps I take to navigate this image is an ideal one to take for every image. So with every image, we will start by looking at the readme. Now, this readme includes a lot of things to do, so instead of deleting our brain from the start, we will go ahead and start on the forensics questions. Now these are very complicated questions, so the entirety of this first part will be those. So the first question states, the malicious actors involved in, with this system have created a system to wipe the modified dates of certain directories on boot. Please list each of the affected directories. So one of the ways to run a script on boot is using the init.d file. So we're going to check there. We can do this with the list or ls command and use it in long listing all in human readable format or lah. Now you can see that there is a file that seems more recent than the others. We can inspect this with nano. Maybe you've noticed the touch command being used to spoof the dates of certain directories or affected directories, aka the answer to the question. Now for some reason we're supposed to use nano for these questions, which I wasn't aware of until after the second question, so you may want to start by using nano to edit the forensics files. Now the readme specifies the Department of Defense has asked you to deposit any unauthorized or malicious files into the etc quarantine file with the original file name intact. And this file falls under the unauthorized and malicious category, so we will want to create this folder and move the file into it. Now, we may move on to the second question, which states, Network traffic was identified that suggests a hidden messages directory somewhere on the server. Please report the date of the last messages sent and pur purge this folder from the system. Do not quarantine this folder as we are worried it may be a trigger for a malicious actor. We will use the same command as last time, searching the most common directory, but adding sort of a modification time to the format, making the command ls-ltah. Now, the, the listing you may find here is a little odd, as it seems a directory has a name entirely consisting of white space. To enter this directory, we can simply use a backslash, a space, and a star. Now, we will use the same command again, but removing this sort of modification time format. The directory name is again quite odd, so let's use cd and then a star, as there is only one directory. Now, repeat previous steps. When it seems you have located the message files, use the stack command to get the precise date and time the last message was modified. I was slightly confused by the timestamps here, so I ended up answering the wrong answer, the change time. Do not be confused, we were not looking for just the most recent date, but the most recent modification date. Now you may delete this directory by using rm-rf and using the backslash space and star trick. As they specify not to quarantine it, so our only other option is to delete it. Now this is where I start to notice the questions are not being scored, so I contact the creator through the Cyber Patriot Discord server and receive the response to use nano to edit the files. After correcting my mistake and fixing my answer for question 2, it is time to move on to question 3. This question states that the SQL server installed on the system has a weak root password. Please identify and list it below. We know that when the server is configured to use its own collection of logins, it will store these usernames and passwords in a local database, which is accessible from this machine. We just have to query the table containing the login credentials and obtain the password. But before we do that, we must access the SQL server through the back door. First, we need to stop the SQL service. Then, we need to start the SQL daemon with this special command. 
To continue, you must open a new terminal and make sure you are in root. Finally, we need to query the password with this next command. Now, it may not look like a password because it is hashed, but a simple Google search can provide the answer. You may start to notice these questions are very difficult, but don't worry, as all you need to do to prepare for these is develop good Google searching skills. Let's move on to question 4, which explains, during your security audit, a member of your team pointed out a suspicious PHP file in the root of the web server. Because the contents of the file have been obscured, your team has decided to analyze it further. When using this PHP script through a browser, you are prompted to enter a password to, to execute its underlying code. However, the password seems to be hard-coded into the PHP file itself. What is the password required to execute the code? So this one, in my opinion, is the hardest, and will require many steps. Obviously, the first thing we want to do is locate the file, which we can do using the find command. One of the, these is in the directory named hi, which is not an authorized folder, so this is the most obvious choice. Use nano to open this file. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You may notice that there is a mumbo jumbo of things to, do, to see here. Upon organizing these, you may find that it is not one, but two regular expressions. We need to reverse these expressions. Regular expressions are commonly known as rejects, so instead of trying to reverse this completely on our own, we will use something that slightly resembles a translator. This translator doesn't actually provide the answer, it just tells you the steps you need to take and when you come to the right answer. Watch as I proceed to painstakingly pick my way through this maze of what I like to refer to as my worst nightmare. After a terribly long amount of time, we finally reach our answer. Now, I will make a decision for your sanity and mine, and not explain how I reached this conclusion. If you would like to know more, either look at the doc linked in the description, or throw this in a translator yourself and have a pick at it. Luckily, the fifth and final question is not nearly as painful and actually quite easy to solve. That question is, which two elevated commands is the top secret group able to invoke without entering a pseudo password? This is quite obviously a sudoers configuration question, so we will use nano to view the sudoers file. This file literally hands you the answer, saying the top secret group, without a password, has access to the user slash bin sudo and bin bash file without a password. Now because this took so much time and energy, I'm going to end part 1 and take a break from my mental sanity. See you next time.